Hi friends, welcome to the Impasse Snare. This was supposed to be a live video tonight and I apologize. I'm still having quite the technical difficulties with service here in Vermont, but we are, little update, we are going to be getting this the kinks worked out next week. And I did want to let y'all down tonight, so I wanted to go ahead and record a video and let's talk about this series that is going to end up being a weekly, every Sunday um, live where we talk about what it means to be an empath and how to not get caught in the empath snare. I want you to thrive as an empath and, and get out of survival mode. So, so many of my clients, this is the number one problem that's plaguing them. People are coming to me from all over the world and the number one, the biggest problem that's plaguing them, we could say technically is narcissist, but really it's down to the simple fact that empaths don't understand their own makeup, their own nature and their own divine purpose and what they're here for. So that's what I, why I'm wanting to offer this free class, because I want to teach you and, and provide you with the resources that I've learned the hard way, of course, uh, in my journey. Um, through this this life, um, keeping in mind that we are all people think that we're human beings having a spiritual experience, and we're not. Um, empaths and light workers, star seeds, we're all spiritual beings having a human experience, and so so many of us are born into so many empaths, so many light workers, star seeds are born into. Um, morally and spiritually bankrupt families. And so when you were born into a family system and into a family of narcissists, then you're the oddball out because you have a conscience. When you're born to people who have an underdeveloped conscience, you're the weird one because you're the one that is parenting your parents. You're the one calling out the wrong and the unjust when you're a child. So you, by the time an empath is grown, we feel like weird people and it can, you know, the, the biggest down, the biggest thing going against in, uh, empaths, the biggest snare is, is a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding and a lack of self-love. So this series and these, these lives that I'm going to be doing, because there's so much about empaths, there's so much about narcissists. It's just too much to get through in one, one episode. Um, so I want to take the time every Sunday um, to connect with you and to to provide you with what I've learned along the way, provide you with information on how to thrive as an empath, on the red flags uh, and, and the characteristics and the traits to watch out for um, as far as narcissists go. Because, you know, empaths and narcissists do this dynamic duo of this dance. I mean, like a moth to a flame. Narcissists and empaths are attracted to each other. And so, you know, we can't rid the world of narcissists, but what we can do is we can educate ourselves and we can become empowered empaths. We can take control of our lives and stop feeling at the mercy of the world and, and, and feeling helpless and vulnerable. We can learn how to protect ourselves so that we may, we, that we, ha we can, we can have the energy to go after our dreams, that we can discover who we truly are and what we were here put here on earth to do. So with that being said, this first uh this first class, let's let's break down, let's find out what is an empath. Is empaths or or em, the word empath and empathy. Of course, empath is derived from the the word empathy and and what this means is to is an empath is to feel empaths feel the feelings of other people like you 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 absorb the energy of other people in your surroundings now from an astrological perspective you hear a lot of talk about the water signs being empaths um, the water houses being in, in, you know empathic in nature and with a tendency to have you know, the water signs. And if you have planets in your water houses that you have, that you're a natural empath. And while that is true for the most part, it, it's not true in its totality. You don't have to have anything in a water sign to be an empath. You don't have to have planets in a water house to be an empath or to be empathic. 
In fact, it's the wiring of your brain for the most part. So you can be devoid of water signs and water houses, but you can be an INFP, INFJ, INTP, INTJ personality. And that's the wiring of your brain. And if you don't know what your personality type is, there's 16. And <clears throat> you can go to 16personalities.com and take a free test. There's a, a longer test at personalitymax.com. It's about a 300 question test. Most people don't uh, want to sit through 300. Would you rather do this or would you rather do that? It's asking the same question over and over. I found in my research that the 16 personalities is is on par with the long te the longer test of personality max. So you can go to 16 personalities, take your free free personality test, and it's going to show you the wiring of your brain. Um, it's the one thing that astrology could, the 30%, 40%, probably even more than that, honestly, um, that astrology could not explain about a personality type to me um, that just didn't fit. And this was the missing link. So when I discovered this years ago, of course, I made everybody take the test. I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread that had ever been invented. And it explained a lot about a person. Like, for instance, I'm a Leo and I am the most introverted Leo. When, when I read things about Leo, it does not sound like me. Like I have major panic attacks before doing videos, before going on live or before teaching workshops, before being in a group and meeting new people. I'm extremely introverted. I, I'm introverted to the core. So I have to really, uh, you know, force myself into the limelight. And that's not anything that you read about Leo's. Um, and this has to do with the wiring of my brain. So even if you don't have those water placings, um, you're, you can still be an empath. So what is an empath? An empath is someone who is innately attuned to the energy of other people around them. Meaning you are a psychic sponge. You are absorbing everyone's energy around you. Um, it, it, like you, your psychic antennas naturally like connect to other people's feelings before they connect to your own even. Your own feelings can be foreign to you, but you understand and read other people's feelings naturally like it, like it, nobody's business. You can bob and weave with the best of the crazy, so to speak. Um, and, and make it look effortless. Uh, you, you anticipate the needs and the wants of other people. Um, and this is a natural thing. Now, understanding your own needs and wants is a different story. Empaths are naturally wired up to put other people before themselves. As an empath, it makes you, a, it, and one of the things to, you can ask yourself as a test for being an empath, does it make you happier giving a gift or does it make you happier to receive a gift? A true empath is always going to answer the question, it makes you happier to give a gift to someone. And empaths are very personal, so you pick up on the some clues, so you're excellent gift givers on top of that. But empaths, you know, although they are innately attuned to the needs of others, they are inherently, uh, you know, there's a difficulty in your own understanding what those needs and desires are. Empaths are driven uh, by guilt for the most part. If you say no to someone, you feel guilty. Um, you feel guilty for not giving your last dollar to the homeless person. You feel guilty for telling your children no. And this is an empath that is 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 basically that your energies are just stressed to the max. I mean, the boundaries are going to be eroded. Empaths can, can you know, this is a, a pervasive scale of, of, of empaths. And there's different types of empaths. Um, but But guilt is probably one of the number one things that empaths wrestle with. Um, and, and so understanding and acknowledging your own needs are very difficult. Um, you have a, a very porous psychic structure, psychic sponge that is constantly absorbing the energy of everyone around you. And if you're not absorbing the energy of everyone around you, then you are becoming that energy in yourself. So 
it's, you know, a, a negative person can kill an empath faster than anyone. Someone who's got a solution for every problem that you come up with drains your energies. You're very prone to narcissists because narcissists need constant validation and flattering. And it makes empaths extremely happy to um, pay compliments to other people and to build them up and to uplift them. So you can see just in that small example of why an empath and a narcissist are constantly doing this tango. And it's very toxic for an empath to get wrapped up with a narcissist because there's no helping a narcissist. First off, that narcissist does not think that there's anything wrong with them. And even the narcissist, these new, um, there's some narcissists and some narcissistic uh, personality disorder people who've owned and accepted that. I'm quite impressed with their channels and their information that they're putting out there. But they'll even tell you there's no stopping the narcissist. They can't stop themselves. They are what they are. The only way they can try to balance the scales, the karmic scales, is to shine a light on their real, the way they really think. And so they have created some channels Right off the hand, I can't think of this one guy that I'm thinking about, but I will try to post a link to his channel um, that I'm very impressed with. I'll post it in the comments. Um, another one is, um, oh man, he's from Israel. Sam Vogman. Uh, he wrote a, uh, he's an author and he's a professor at a Russian um university or ukrainian i can't remember exactly which i'm pretty sure it's like the russian federation but his name is sam vaknin and he has a profound insights on narcissism because he is a narcissist and matter of fact he's a psychopath and and there's no changing him and he's a professor so the thing about empaths empaths or over idealistic. We, we have an idealistic nature naturally. We tend to see the best in other people and we want to give people a chance to change. Matter of fact, as an empath, if we believe that the world was hopeless, that nobody could change, we just wouldn't want to go on anymore. Like, what's the point? But there, there are people, you, you were born with this natural energy to, um, to be of service to other people. Um, there are people that can use and benefit from an empath's help. And then there's people that are going to keep you from helping those people. And those are narcissists. Narcissists are going to be the time wasters, the time they're the dream stealers for empaths because they're constantly, you're, you're like the dog chasing your tail all the time. No matter what you do for a narcissist, it's never enough. It's never good enough. And they've always got something to complain, moan and bitch about. And, and they just completely, you'll be in a great mood as an empath. You go around a narcissist and they immediately suck your energy dry. And you're just like looking for the nearest bed. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've experienced that, especially when I was younger. Now, even in, in, in educating yourself as an empath and, and researching if you could have codependency tendencies, um, educating yourself on what it means to be a highly sensitive person. And that's going to be where the water signs come in at, because you can be an empath without being a highly necessarily somebody who has HSP, meaning their senses are all heightened on top of that. You can just connect to somebody's feeling center. But if you're an HSP personality person and you were born with your senses like overstimulated, um, you can really, it can really wreak havoc on your entire life, your health and everything. And that's true for, for empaths in general. But really, if you have like a water ascendant, if you have your moon in a water sign or your water sign or the water houses, you are going to be more affected detrimentally by a narcissist. Um, empaths are people or, you know, people pleasers in a sense, because, you know, you just want to make people happy. And a lot of empaths, a lot of light workers are, like I said, born into spiritually and morally bankrupt families. And so you you met very young a toxic parent that you, you know, you spent your entire childhood not being a child, but propping this parent up in their moods and trying to 
to, uh, you know, part the Dead Sea, so to speak, to make this parent happy. And it still wasn't good enough. You were still, you know, you didn't make good enough grades, not pretty enough, too fat, too skinny, too laughed. Your laugh was annoying. I mean, narcissists will pick you apart no matter what what you do, what you accomplish, they will minimize all the great qualities and the caring qualities. They will minimize that. And you're the selfish one. You're the narcissist. Um, they set you up on this, this cycle where they mirror you. And we're going to go into a deep dive into the further week, into the weeks ahead of what it means to be love bombed, what it means to be mirrored, what it means to be triangulated, um, to be breadcrumbed. Because when, if you're new, if you're coming out of a narcissistically abusive relationship or a relationship with a narcissist, you're going to come, come across some words like flying monkey. <laughs> I can remember when I first discovered what narcissism was, I was like, what is this crap? Like flying monkeys? Isn't that from the Wizard of Oz? And I, I mean, I didn't even, it sounded so ridiculous. that <laughs> I mean, I did. I, I went uneducated about it and I did myself a disservice for years. So I want to break all this down and, what, and, and put it in like normal layman's terms of like how this, what this really means. So, um, okay. So we're going to be doing that and focusing on that. And I do want to encourage y'all, if you have specific questions that you want me to go into a deep dive, uh, a specific topic about empaths and narcissists, um, feel free to leave me a comment in the section and I will be answering those questions on the next video. Okay. Um, so also I want to say, um, so you can tend to take on the energy of other people. And if you are around as an empath, if you were around a negative Nancy, you will find yourself to be negative as well. And your energy drained. You're very prone to psych being psychic, what's called psychically preyed upon. Um, narcissists have not one single authentic bone in their body. And so the reason they're attracted to empaths is because the light in an empath, the empaths are the eternal optimist, a healthy empath. Um, you know, a healthy empath always sees the light at the end of the tunnel and is always trying to make the world a better place. And narcissists like don't have that because they're miserable people. So they want to take your light from you. So in a sense, it's kind of like a spiritual battle. But at the end of the day, it's a em, narcissists are dream stealers. Empaths are very special people and they're here to help heal the world. Not all empaths are light workers, but all light workers are empaths. All empaths can be light workers. Once you understand your energy and you choose that you're going to transmute all the negative that's happened to you, you're going to find a way to use your story to, to light the light the way for other people for when they're in the dark. That's when you're in, you're empowered. That's when you're an empowered empath. That's when you take all the bad that's happened to you and you um, you transmute it, you turn it into something good because you're you're wielding your own power to help other people. And that's what we're here to do. We are here to we don't have to be perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone goes through bad times. I'm not perfect. I mean <laughs> nobody's perfect, but it, you know it at the heart of an empath that there's always, if it's, if they had a choice, I mean, you ask any empath, I mean, they can't stand to see anybody hurt. Um, and, and, and empaths have an actual, their whole physical makeup, their whole biology is different than the average person. So you can get into empath overload and we're going to get into that. Even you can, you know, your adrenal glands are going crazy, dumping too much cortisol, empath overload, is is when an empath is in an extremely stressful situation where a toxic person is just like pushing their buttons they're backed in the corner they have no time to themselves they have no time to decompress and so the fight or flight is stimulated in in the you know you're in constant cortisol release constant panic and the anxiety just keeps you know running rampant the adrenal glands are going crazy um, and so it, it causes a whole physical, chemical reaction, biological reaction in an empath's body stress does. So one of the things, uh, let's get through a couple of more um, signs of, of an empath and traits of an empath. And then I want to get into some, some uh, you know, some things that I've learned that have helped me along the way. And um, I'm sorry that I just made this loud noise. I'm so nervous. I can't. 
doing videos is so hard, y'all. It's just like, it's the last thing I want to do. I want to help you. I love connecting with y'all, but man, I'm such an introvert. This is so hard. I want to encourage anybody who feels like they're supposed to be in the camera should do it. It doesn't matter if you're an empath or not, because I know that I have to be, but it's the last thing I want to do. So that means you got like an important message if you can override yourself. Okay. So um, now one of the things about empaths are there's an underdeveloped inner child energy. Okay. So your boundaries for the most part were eroded and you don't know how to take in proper emotional nourishment. So this causes the two extreme states of this over-dependence on people depending on you. Okay. And this is the codependent state. Um, you need validation. You need reassurance from other people. You're on shaky ground if you're not seen in if you're not seen in a in in a positive light. To other people, your your self-worth is tied up into how other people see you. And that is a very fragile state to be in. Because if you are with a narcissist and your self-worth or anybody, not everybody's going to have a high opinion of you every day. And it should not end your world. And I know that state to be in because I've been there many times. And I've literally had to crawl myself, pull myself out of my own hell of, of codependency. I was raised by a narcissistic mother who absolutely hated my guts and the ground that I walked on. I don't say that in a victim mindset because if it wasn't for her, I would not be who I am today. So I, I show gratitude for that relationship, but it, it was it was very difficult for me to find my way out of this out of the codependency, out of the of, of seeking valid my own validation through someone else is eyes like my self-worth being tied up. And if I can get out of it, there is hope y'all, y'all can get out of it too. And so that's what I want to provide y'all today. But the other state is a counter dependent state that the empath, you know, that it's this pendulum of our state swing back and forth. And that is, I'm so sorry. I thought that I had turned that off. Um, and so that is, um, I'm trying to get professional y'all. I'm an astrologer. It's hard for me to do, uh, <laughs> the videos, but I love y'all so much. And I'm very passionate about, um, about what I do and about, you know, about what's helped me. And I see how my information helps other people. And so I, I do want to help as many people as I can. And I really do appreciate every single one of you for your support and for uh, your patience as I we embark on this journey together of, of uh, the Cosmic Owl. This is a, t if it wasn't for y'all, I would not be where I'm at today. Your encouragement. And I, I do want to, I'm very grateful and your patience. Okay. So the counter dependence, what happens is that, you know, you push people away. You've been burned and you're like, I don't want anybody to get close. I've got this. And you don't let anyone do anything for you, which it, it, it it's, it shoot, you shoot yourself in the foot, so to speak, is the saying we have in the South. It's hard for empaths to be vulnerable. It's hard because we feel bad about it. An unhealthy, an empath, an, an unempowered empath feels guilty if anybody does anything for them. Yet we want, we feel so lonely about this as well. But we, we, the guilt, if anybody does anything, we feel bad and it's a self worth thing, like we don't deserve it. So, we push people away. And when we do find healthy relationships and someone makes a nice gesture to us, we don't even accept that very well. So we, we want to immediately do something right back for them. And, and so working on self-love is going to be one of the key things here. Now, because I'm going to say, I, I'm going to say that around, I would say a, a good 80%, 85% of my employees, empath clients, my light worker clients have come from, you know, um, neglected at bare minimum, usually very emotionally neglected or damaged, wounded, very wounded in, during childhood. So, you know, you, you're programming. So you have this wiring of your brain. If you were wounded during childhood, if you were not if you did not have the foundation for emotional development during childhood and you're an empath, you, you have this feeling that you're not good enough. And this, this toxic shame pervades your, your, your overall being, it's your programming. And, and it just, it grows with time. So one of the first things I, I want to do 
um, that that worked the most for me. And I wanted all my money back after after I found this was um, I went through over a decade of therapy and not keeping my appointments. I'm terrible with appointments, but I, I really I kept all my appointments and I went because I wanted to be a better person. But I mean, there was just something so deep in me that I that was not healed, that could not get healed, this bitterness. There's a bitterness that can come along with a wounded empath. So, but um, I found this book called Toxic Parents um, that changed my life. I did not even know anything about empaths, codependency, narcissism, or anything. The second book for, and this is going to, Toxic Parents can be for men or women. Um, and, and this, and empaths out, you know, we tend to spoil our children. So I highly recommend you encourage your own children to read toxic parents because empaths can be just as toxic to their children as narcissists going the other way. And I've learned this as well out of a sense of guilt and not wanting to parent our children like our parents did us. We can tend to spoil our children too much. And, and that's just, that's very toxic as well. So I, I highly recommend Toxic Parents. Um, and, and the good thing about this book that I love is that it doesn't just label you like, oh, you're codependent, this it's hopeless and things like that. It actually, um, it, it actually shows you where the breakdown of the psychological structure uh, from the toxic programming during childhood, if you've experienced that, and how to set healthy boundaries for yourself. Now, it took me a long time to understand how to set boundaries for myself. Not every empath is going to come from a background of, an, of a, a narcissistic mother, Um that borderlined on probably sociopathy. Um, so, it, but I did. And, and so when your own mother doesn't love you, um, and especially being the same sex parent is the most influential, the subconscious says, if my own mother doesn't love me, who will, who can? So how do you set boundaries for yourself when you've never been loved by your, your, by your parents? Um, that was the the question and the problem that I ran into, but I kept pondering on it. And then it dawned on me. I looked at my son one day and I was like, well, I love him more than anything in the world. And so I, I had set out some pictures of myself when I was a little girl, four or five years old. And um, those are pictures that I, I, I would have rather forgotten. I wasn't one to set out pictures for my childhood um, because it was a painful time for me. My mother literally um, made my life miserable and I just, it was in the past. I wanted to move on. I didn't want to remember that time. I didn't want a chance of sparking those re constant rejected memories, but I set them out and I started reflecting on the little girl that I was. And I remember doing something. I, I sparked some memories um, and they started coming back painful ones too. And painful ones, I would typically just shut down my whole Capricorn way. I have moon and Capricorn. So immediately if something uncomfortable comes up, I'm one to just shut it down, move on. Uh, there, why, why, you know, why get upset over old stuff? But I heard as, a, as to heal my inner child. And this is one of the number one wounds in empaths is an inner child wound that I would have to grieve for my inner child. And I was like, grieve for my inner child. <laughs> I sounded so Southern when I said that y'all. I was like, that's for weak people. I'm not going to cry for myself. I'm a Leo. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know I was a Leo at the time, but I'm like, I'm not going to cry for myself. But I was willing to do anything to not turn it into my mother. And so I, I set these pictures out and I started reflecting on it because I'm trying to set boundaries for myself, but I could not ever do that that way. So those memories that would come back. I started inserting my son in those memories, the happy ones, the sad ones, um, the and, and the painful ones. I watched it ho uh, the whole. I watched the whole thing play out. One good thing an empath has going for them is their imagination. We're very imaginative, so when we see something, when we visualize something, we feel we feel our memories still. The memories are stored in our bodies, but when I put my son in that place, and when I saw him instead of me it devastated me and I mean I was heartbroken like I started crying on some of them it's still hard for me to talk about to this day and um, I told myself 
that I was a person who deserved to have a mother that loved me like that. And I deserved, you know, to have that kind of protection, have somebody care about me the way that I did him. And after a couple of those memories and a couple of that scenario playing out, um, I, I had this deep soul cry and I, and I finally cried for myself and it was the, the, it happened twice. It was like four hours of wailing. And that's how my inner child from that point on my inner child integrated. Now, have I been in a toxic relationship with a narcissist since then? <laughs> yes. But the thing is, I've never had one tear me down before, um, like like I was torn down in the past. I've gotten stronger over the years. This is something that I'm always going to have to keep research on. But I I am on my way now. I feel like I am a thriving empath, and I'm not in survival mode. It does not matter what somebody says to me. I know that I'm a good person. And if I do wrong, I will admit I'm wrong, but there's not a person that can tear me down. I, like my self-worth is from within. Those boundaries have set. There is a strength and, um, a, 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 and a, you know, a strength to my core that I did not have before. There's an integration, mind, body, and spirit that is in no one's hands. That is an inner knowing and an inner strength. So, that's my story on, on how I set boundaries and how I healed my inner child. Now, it wasn't healed that day. I didn't have two soul cries and it was healed. It's still healing to this day. It's a journey, but she's there and I'm more playful and I'm creative because see, when you have an inner child wound, your creativity is blocked. And that's the number one thing that narcissists rob you of is this creativity, is this light, is your little tinker fairy dust tinkerbell fairy dust of 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 optimism and hope um and, and creativity and they're, they're dream robbers so when you're when you have an inner child wound your dreams are robbed from you your happiness your joy you're on autopilot and so that's very essential if you if you think that if this resonates with you that fortunately i have i have a lot of resources now that i that are that will help this process for you of healing your inner child go a lot faster. And that's going to be through guided meditation. Um, sleep hypnosis is the most profound thing I've ever discovered in my life. It has changed my life and I would not be sitting here doing this video if it, if it weren't for the universe sending this my way. Now I've been able to pass this along to people from all over the world who have benefited from it as well. There's a channel on YouTube called unlock your life. And it is a guided meditation slash sleep hypnosis channel. Um, and the reason that sleep hypnosis is so powerful for inner child healing is because your inner child is wounded in the first seven years of your life. Well, this is your subconscious, your programming that you have carried through it, throughout your entire adult life that is playing in the background, making every decision for it that's, that is, is constantly making decisions for you. It's like your autonomic psychological makeup system so and it's it's created off of how you were loved as a child so if you have these wounds from a from a toxic childhood the subconscious is always seeking to validate itself so what that means is you will keep selling yourself short this your subconscious attracting people places jobs that um that are uh, you know that are mimic your early childhood environment so the way to overcome that is through reprogramming this the subconscious. So I want to encourage every one of you to go to Unlock Your Life, to search up um, inner child uh, healing guided meditations, inner child healing sleep hypnosis, and do a deep dive into that. Um, and, and so that's going to start out. I would listen to that four nights a week for six weeks. And, and I want you to start thinking about nourishing yourself, forming a relationship with your childhood self. Who were you? Who is the little boy inside of you? Who were you supposed to be before the world made you their servant? What are your dreams? These are all, you know, where are you going to serve? Let's unlock your creativity. I want to challenge all of you. Um, another thing 
uh, about the sleep hypnosis. So you have the sleep hypnosis. That's going to fast track you. You've got Toxic Parents. Another book for women um, that had narcissistic mothers is called Will I Ever Be Good Enough? Healing the Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers. This book is profound. Oh, it changed my life. That and Toxic Parents are equally just as good. I'm not leaving you out, men, because Toxic Parents is just as good. It, 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 you know, they're equally, I give them a 10. You can get them on Amazon, on Kindle. No, I'm not affiliated marketing <laughs> with these books. I'm just telling you what's helped me. Now, another thing that has helped me is visualizing, is understanding my, my inner energy and understanding these psychic vampires and that people want to tell me their problems in, in the, in it drains me. So the negative Nancy's are going to be attracted to an empath, like why don't rise? So I want you to start visualizing yourself in a bubble of light. And I want you to just let the bubble of light in, encompass you and encase you and, and, and use your imagination and excuse me, let me get a drink. I'm sorry. Use your imagination. I've been doing too much talking today. Um, and, and let this bubble of light be a protective. I want you to pray to whoever you pray to. If it's if you if you're not a person of faith, then if you're even if you're on my uh, my page and seeing this, then surely you at least believe in the universe and you at least believe in source. So whether it's God, Jesus, Allah, Source, um, if you're Buddhist, if you're hin Hindu, whatever you believe in your arch archangels, if you believe in Mother Mary, if you believe in someone that you love dearly that passed on, that you feel them with you. I want you to ask them to protect you, ask them to encase you and let you be surrounded by this protective light of love. And, and every time you leave your house, every time you interact with people, I want you to try to start getting in the habit of doing this bubble light of protection. And that's going to be an energetic, it's called energetic shielding. And you're just going to start shielding your energy from other people. And you're going to gain, and as silly as it sounds, you're going to gain a lot of strength from this. Now, you can also carry crystal, a crystal, wear a crystal bracelet, like a smoky quartz or a quartz or pink quartz, something that's got a genuine crystal in it. You can get these little beaded bracelets, even black tourmaline, onyx. That's going to, if you're around uh, a lot of narcissists, those are going to be the strongest absorbing negative energy. So if you are a person with a water sign ascendant, if you have Rising. If you are, if you have, a, a, you know, specifically the Scorpio rising, the moon in Scorpio, the sun Scorpio, you need to be carrying an onyx and a obsidian, a black tourmaline. Wear this on you. It don't have to be flashy. Men, you can wear this too, but wear this on you. Um, and this is going to protect your energy and help shield you. It's going to absorb the negative energy around you. I, I, this is one of the best things that you can do for yourself. Now, the thing about the crystals is that people don't realize is that you have to you have to clear these crystals. So this right here is what I want y'all to get. Okay, this is a selenite or selenite. Y'all, y'all know I'm from the south. This is a selenite crystal. It's a softer crystal. You cannot get this wet. This is not a crystal that you can charge in salt water. So you don't want to get this wet. But this is a, a, a charging crystal. It charges and clears other crystals. So let's say you get a little bracelet that you're going to wear that's got multiple crystals on it from like TJ Maxx or Marshalls or somewhere like that. Every night when you before you go to bed, I want you to pull the bracelet off and put it on here so it clears the energy because you can wear it as an empath a couple of times and it's it's full. It's not going to absorb any more energy. Now, you can also clear your crystal jewelry through um, sea salt uh, water, through letting it sit out in the moonlight and through the sunlight. You can charge your crystals. So, but this is the easiest way. Get one of these, set it on your nightstand and take your bracelet, take your necklace off and voila, you're in and put it back on the next day. It's right there. It's going to remind you. And also through meditation, 
anytime meditation and binaural beats. Now, when you do those guided meditations, you need to use headphones because they have something called binaural beat frequencies in them. This is wonderful. This is one sound frequency going in one ear and one sound frequency going in the other ear. And what this does is it tweaks your brain waves to where it makes the the affirmations and the reprogramming it take you know your subconscious it makes you more receptive to that programming so you fast track it turn your notifications off subscribe to youtube premium because you don't want a commercial interruption trust me if you get a commercial interruption it's like you're being pulled from one world to the next so you just need to uh, go ahead and you're you'll be you'll be grouchy for the rest of the day it's miserable don't do it it's happened to me a bunch i hate it <laughs> turn your notifications on silent and it's going to be through those meditations that you are getting healed. You are gaining, um, you are healing yourself. You are opening yourself up to the universal consciousness and you are allowing the universe and the source, God, whoever you believe in to flow through you and heal you from the inside out. This is the, the, the best thing that we can do to protect ourselves against the toxic people of the world so that even if we interact with them, they're not going to affect us like what they do without us having our inner child, without us having um, these healings, without reprogramming our subconscious for positive and loving and light things. So crystals, you can take baths. You definitely want to take a bath or a shower before you go to bed and when you come in from work. You know, taking a shower and taking a bath is not just about cleansing the body. It is a very spiritual, it cleanses your aura. It, re it, it washes everybody's energy away. And if you think about your body being like this, if you can think like your aura goes all the way around your energetic field, it's not just your physical body, it's, it's around you. That gets dirty and piled up with other people's crap. So taking a, a shower when you get in from work, taking a and when you feel stressed out, put you some sea salt, put you some, not sea salt, <laughs> don't put sea salt in the bathtub, put you some bath salt, some ashwagandha, um, Dr. Teal's with ashwagandha is excellent because it relaxes the mind and it allows you to have clarity of thought. Now, if you have, you, you might want to get your magnesium and your zinc uh, checked because if it's low and, and empaths tend to run low on magnesium, this creates more of a stressed uh, response in your, your whole makeup. So I want to encourage that. And I'm, I'm so happy that you tuned in today and I do hope to see you next week. And I hope this video helps you. Um, and I hope that you can find peace and that you can Get out of survival mode and you can chase your dreams and you can light the world up for other people who are struggling with the things that you've struggled with. And then you can teach them how to overcome them. And that's the way we leave the world a better place. So in closing, I want to um, guide us through a, a quick meditation. And, and I hope to see you next week. And I hope you all have a wonderful week and be good to yourself. Love yourself and take care of yourself because we're no good to anybody if we could, if, if we're down and out and if we don't take care of ourselves there's not going to be anybody to take care of us and you as an empath you already know you've already been down that road and not only is it bad that you are, are you know you're down and out but then the the rage that <laughs> ensues when you know what you've done for other people and the loneliness because it triggers the self-worth wound. So please be good to yourself. Do something kind for yourself this week and work on self-love. So as an act of self-love, I'm going to lead you through a meditation. So everyone close your eyes and just allow the energy that you feel just to let it register on your skin and in your mind. And I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose. And I want you to breathe in white light, white healing light of love. And then I want you to exhale out of your mouth. And I want you to envision exhaling anything that doesn't belong to you, any energy. So, okay, let's breathe in white light and out darkness. Let's do that again. Breathe in white light. Breathe out the darkness. Now for this last breath in, I want you to think loving thoughts of yourself. I want you, when you breathe in, I want you to think to yourself, I am love. 
I am worthy. I am strong and I am brave. And then I want you to visualize your feet being grounded into the ground in a big white light, a bubble of light, of pure love protecting you and loving you and just wrapping you in the warmth. Okay, take one more deep breath in and breathe in white light. Hold it and breathe out white light. And with that, we say namaste.